It's time to put the demons on the Demon Slayer tier list. Now that Rui and Akaza have been out for a few weeks, and we've had the opportunity to not only play as these characters, but watch some of the top players use them as well, we finally have enough information to make an informed decision, or at least I feel confident enough, to finally put these characters down on their final tier list spots. How strong or how weak are Rui and Akaza? I can tell you right now, they're not stronger than today's sponsor. S plus tier, this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Folks like you and me know what is the struggle of trying to watch anime legally. The shows we want to watch are spread across five different streaming services and sometimes they're not even available in our country. For me, it's One Piece. Every single week, we don't get that on Crunchyroll for some reason. That's where a VPN comes in. You can unlock the full library of anime and TV shows by simply choosing one of their servers. On top of that, VPNs protect your data and online privacy, so using a VPN on a daily basis really has become just a second nature to me. With Surfshark, you get all of that for less than $3 a month when you sign up for a two-year plan, because if you follow the link down below, you'll get an 83% discount plus four months absolutely free. On top of being so affordable, Surfshark works on unlimited devices, so you will never have to log out of your account on your computer so you can use it on your phone or tablet. You can have your login active on every single device you own. And if you're worried about your internet speed being nerfed, this is my normal internet speed, and this is my speed with Surfshark VPN. And as you can see, it doesn't make it any slower. You can start browsing safer and and unlock the full library. Watch all the shows that you haven't watched today. Go to surfshark.deal slash globku for an 83% discount plus four months for free when you sign up for a two-year plan. And if you're not happy with the service, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to even try it out for yourself. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. Let me get this out of the way first. Tier lists are subjective. There's no such thing as an objective tier list that everyone can agree on. The best I can do is place these characters according to how strong I think they are, and then explain my reason for doing so, and you're free to disagree, of course, your opinion is still valid. So, Rui and Akaza, the question here is really how high are we gonna place Rui and how low are we gonna place Akaza? Because let's not beat around the bush, Rui is the stronger of the two. Some may even call him a top tier, me, however, looking at the top tier characters on this list, I don't think Rui is on the same level. Sure, Rui has things that even the top tiers don't have. He's got the best zoning in the game, and maybe has the best stagger pressure, I say maybe because Gyu can also stagger, you never know when a dead column's gonna come out. Out, or when he's gonna chase you with a water wheel, Gyu's stagger pressure is scary. But Gyu's stagger is definitely more expensive and a lot riskier than Rui's. That said, these top tiers have a lot more utility in neutral. Sure, they can't zone, but they can chase down their opponents a lot better, and they can be very oppressive on block as well. So they kind of do the same stuff that Rui does, except all of them deal about triple the damage that Rui deals. Not to mention they're all demon slayers, so they all have assists and they can execute all kinds of tactic. So I don't think Rui belongs all the way up there. But I also don't see him as low as B tier. Rui kinda has Makomo damage, and while his neutral isn't as strong as Makomo's, I'd say his pressure is even stronger. Paired up with the ability to zone and time waste, I think he's definitely stronger than B tier. Which lands us perfectly on A tier, and I feel really good about this placement for Rui. Now, where on A tier? Nengoku definitely has more damage than Rui. In neutral, he has the tilt skill, and that's about it. So Rui definitely has better neutral, and Rengoku's pressure is one of his biggest weaknesses. Sure, he deals a lot of chip damage, but you don't have to block that. There's a lot of gaps in his block strings that you can push block and get away from, and all of his attack buttons are terrible on block. He push block usually leads to a guaranteed punish. So I would say Rui is definitely better than Rengoku. Urokodaki is a funny one, because Rui also traps the opponent, but he does it from far away, while Urokodaki's traps only work up close. That said, between the two, I gotta give it to Rui. I think Urokodaki's pressure, while good, can be quite expensive. The only ability that he has that's plus on block is the trap, which he has to set up with a water wheel if he wants to do it safely. Rui just presses the attack button from a safe distance. Now, Urokodaki does have a lot more damage, and he has some neutral, and he has some pressure, but I think I gotta give it to Rui, because his pressure and neutral are just a lot better, so let's slide him above Urokodaki as well. Now, Shinobu, Shinobu, that's trick here. Shinobu wins in damage, she usually needs an assist, but still, she wins that. Neutral is kind of even, Shinobu has her dash skills, she has the best strong attack in the game, while Rui has the big buttons and the projectiles. Pressure-wise, maybe Rui will be slightly better. Shinobu is very good though, but it can get really expensive meter-wise. And Rui is once again just pressing the attack button from a safe distance by comparison. But I think what's gonna push Shinobu ahead of Rui is her assist. The utility she brings to a team is so good that she's already a solid enough character on her own. Adding her assist to the mix, which enhances pretty much any team, I think that makes her a more solid character. So that's as far as we'll climb with Rui. We're gonna play some right there, 
below Shinobu and above Urokodaki, just shy of a top 5 placement, but I think that's very fair. And honestly, kind of impressive for a character that has no assist and a 1.2 times damage multiplier. That's really good. Now for Akaza. Akaza can do a lot more than I first thought, but his downsides are also insane. So more than anything, I hope that I can explain to you how strong Akaza is, but what he is risking to get that reward. He has some sauce for sure, but it comes at a big cost. First of all, damage wise, he's almost at Zenitsu level. Once you learn how to optimize Akaza's roots, he can dish out a ton of damage with his combos. And they're not super situational, so he can get this pretty much anytime he wants. That said, he can only get that damage if he decides to spend his demon skills, meaning he loses access to an escape if he gets caught in a combo, something the other characters with high damage don't need to sacrifice for damage. Which is a great example of how good Akaza can be, but how great of a sacrifice he demands. In neutral, he can catch you with a few of his abilities, like the punch flurry or the projectiles, but against a patient opponent, this is really tough to use, because you burn through your meters super quickly. To make the punches or the projectiles safe, you usually have to cancel them. That's two bars of meter every time you want to start something, just to be safe. For comparison, you take Water Tanjiro, and if you want to spend two bars, you get plus frames. You can continue your pressure. Water Tanjiro doesn't have to spend two bars of meter just to be safe. No, he's doing it because he wants to stay in your face. And that's the case for most characters, by the way. Akaza has to spend two bars just to be safe, just to make sure he doesn't get punished. Now, we talked about the punch flurry as well as the projectiles, but what about Annihilation? Isn't that good for neutral too? Yes, absolutely. An armored move that reaches almost full screen and starts a combo that leads into optimal damage? That is an amazing skill, but once again, it is safe on block and not plus. So against an enemy that is patient, that is blocking, if they block this ability from Akaza, that means Akaza just spent a demon skill and now he is forced to block, otherwise he risks getting punished. What that means for Akaza's neutral is that all of his abilities are very good for neutral, but only if the opponent is trying to approach you. If Akaza is the one trying to approach the opponent and the opponent is playing very patiently, Akaza is gonna burn through a lot of meter trying to get in, so he really struggles in neutral if he has to take the initiative. In a way, that's kind of similar to Inosuke, and that's the reason why Inosuke is placed so low on the tier list, because Inosuke can stop opponents from approaching him, but he's not very good at approaching himself. But on top of that, and very much the opposite of Inosuke, his pressure isn't threatening enough to scare opponents away from guarding. Blocking against an Inosuke is scary, because for a couple of bars and an assist, he can easily guard break you. And his grab is so fast that he's one of the scariest characters to block against in this game. Akaza doesn't have that. His skills don't deal that much guard damage, so blocking is usually safe. The one tool that he has that threatens an opponent's guard is his grab, which is also pretty fast, almost as fast as Inosuke's, but its damage is one of the lowest in the entire game. And just like any grab mix-up, if the opponent reads it, they can mash. And if they mash against Akaza, he's gonna take a ton of damage because of his insanely high damage multiplier. 1.25 times the damage taken. He takes the most damage out of any character in the game. So there's a huge risk going for a grab, and the reward isn't that great because of that low grab damage. But it's also the only option that Akaza has to discourage a player from just blocking. And that is just a huge downside. I really don't think his pressure is anything special in this game. And finally, the other good tool that Akaza has in his kit is his charge attack. This covers such a good distance, but it is a demon strong attack, which means that on block or on whiff, it is a free punish. And this makes a very good move completely unusable against good players that use slayers. In the words of Shadow Pierre, the best Akaza player that I know, probably one of the best in the world. Akaza is balanced like a slayer, except he lacks assists. If he had assists, he, for example, wouldn't have the charge attack the merit or struggle as much to open you up, since he could just rely on dash assist dash and build guard meter that way. Akaza does feel like a bad character specifically because he is a demon. All his downsides would simply disappear if the character had an assist. It's a character that will feel good when playing against another demon, in this case Rui, he is the only one out right now, or against inexperienced players who will rush you, and Akaza is very good at countering those rushes. But once players realize how safe it is playing against Akaza, how safe it is blocking against Akaza, because he really isn't getting that much and he's risking a ton going for grabs, then they'll lose any reason to approach once they have a health lead, and getting a health lead against Akaza is really not that hard thanks to the damage that he takes. I've gone back and forth several times with my placement on his tier list, but Akaza's always been floating down there from low to mid tier. The more time passes though, the more I feel like people have figured out how to play against Akaza. So his downsides become more and more obvious, and at the same time it doesn't feel like there's new tech being developed to counter those downsides. Akaza mains are struggling to find ways to plug his own 
flaws and for that reason I'm gonna rank him down there at C tier just ahead of Sabito. And I actually think Sabito would be a strong character if only his jump attacks worked, they feel broken and in need of a patch and that's not the case with Akaza. Usually his abilities work as intended but when you put them all together the result is a character that just isn't that good. The good stuff comes at a huge risk at leaving you open for punishment and maybe that's the character philosophy you can go for but the reward just isn't enough and that's why I think Akaza is a low tier. But that's the placement of the demons on the tier list and from the sounds of it we won't have to wait long until we get Susamaru and Yahaba. But first I would love to know what you guys think of this assessment. Do you agree with this placement? What would you change about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget about today's sponsor. Go to surfshark.deal slash globku for an 83% discount plus 4 months for free when you sign up for a 2 year plan with my favorite VPN service. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Bye.